Lord, for sin. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you would show up in this place, God.
Once again, it's virtual via Zoom, and you can get that information at the website or on Facebook. Once again, we are so, so, so uh, sad that we will not be having our joint Holy Week services this, this year, but we know that God is able. And so we will continue to praise God in the midst of it all. The WMS Gospel GST has also been canceled. And while you're home, take care of whatever you do at home, Take a moment to be counted. Uh, please fill out your census online at www.2020census.gov or return the form that was mailed to your home. Uh, if you don't want them to come to your door, do it online. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you all for your generosity and what you've been doing. Those of you who have continued to send in your tithes and offerings, uh, we certainly appreciate what you're doing. We certainly appreciate all that you do to keep the church running. And so to God be the glory for you. But those of you who are interested in giving and supporting this, this worship, this ministry here at St. Paul, we invite you to go to, uh, for electronic giving, go to our website. Once again, stpaulanoin.org and use the Clover Give icon. Or you can always use the good old postal service and know that to us here at St. Paul Amy Church, 1200 Bay Street, Des Moines, Iowa, 50314. And for that, we say thank you. As we move into our circle of concern, we want to continue to lift up uh, several people who've been on our prayer list, continue to be on our prayer list. Once, once again, we want to lift up Bobby and Gloria Wilson, Although we did get a great report that they're doing fine, but let's continue to keep them lifted up. We want to lift up Brother Dennis Ashby, Brother Brian Smith, Brother Greg Stewart. We want to lift up our world. Also, we want to lift up Sister Patricia Elroy, who now resides at University Park Nursing Home. She cannot receive visitors at the moment, but please give her a call and let her know that you are thinking about her. Uh, Sister Cheryl Cook, Sister Glenda Hill, Sister Trella Perry, Sister Bonnie Newton, Sister Gloria Lane, Sister Virgin Carl, and Sister Cordis Williams. Those are, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, in the very precious name of Jesus, we just want to take this moment to lift up those names that were called and lift up our world. Heavenly Father, we need you to be with all those who stand in the need of your healing power, your delivering power. We stand in the, uh, ask the Lord that you be with those who find themselves upset and unsure with what the world is uh, doing right now. And in the midst of their uncertainty, Lord, we ask that you will remind them that you are God and you promise to be with them forever and that you will not be slack when it concerns your promises. Heavenly Father, continue to give us joy in the midst of it. Even under our mask, oh God, let our joy still shine. Let our, let our smile, let us continue to be, be happy, oh God, because it's been one more morning. As the preacher said last week, God, we got the victory. Heavenly Father, we thank you on this Palm Sunday. We are able to gather together via these electronic means in order to praise and worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all in the people of God say, Amen. And now we have our ministry of music, Sister Nikki Ross.
Coronavirus no more. When our king comes, death will be 
no more. When our king comes, everything that was bad will be good again. When our king comes, we'll lay down our mask, hug one another back like we did in January and February. When our king comes, we will gather together and sing praises together. Our king is coming. Yes. He's coming. He is coming. Yes, sir. See, we share some commonality with the folks who shouted about Jesus coming. They were tired of being in their condition. Mm -hmm. We are tired of being in this condition. Mm -hmm. The kids even want to go back to school. <laughs> they, they did not know. Just, the folk back then did not know uh, when their help was coming, but they knew that one day God would send the Savior. We don't know when this will be over, but we say we are trusting God to bring us through this. But let me say this. When our times are tough, we often try to figure out our own solution. And we act as if we no longer believe that God will or is able to adequately, adequately meet our expectations. Each week, as we go through this journey and we see the numbers rising and the markets falling, there is a sense among many that God is tearing a little bit too long. God, we need you to move. God, we need you to show up and fix this situation so we can get back to our normal. For those of you who are out of work and worried about what's coming, uh, about what's coming next, there is a word for you this morning. For those of you who are afraid that you or a loved one may be sick or will get sick, there is a word for you this morning. And for those of you who are going through with uh, uh, corona, coronavirus, there is a word for you as well. I am reminded of the prophet Ezekiel. In chapter 37, the prophet who was called to prophesy to the people of Judah during the darkest days of the Babylonian captivity. He was called to bring hope to people whose spirits were so desolate that they were like dry bones. Uh, they were like dry bones, baking in the sun. But God will reassemble them and bring life and breathe life into the nation once again. Ezekiel speaking for God promises that their difficulties will be followed by future glory so that they would know that I am the Lord. And we, we need to remember that when we don't know what to do sometimes, the answer is not for us to always guess or try to figure it out. I like how Ezekiel tells the story. He said, God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around, he, uh, around and among them. There was just a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bleached by the sun. And God said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God. See, I ain't as dumb as I look. I said, Master God, only you know that. And God said to me, that was a good answer. So go ahead and prophesy over these bones. They dry bones to listen to the message of God. And God, the messenger, the master, told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you, and you will come to life. That's some good news. Some of us are worried, but God is still saying, I'm coming, and I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back with the breath of life. You will come alive, and, and you will realize that I am God. That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to attach flesh to you. I'm going to put meat on your bones. I'm going to cover you with skin and bring life into you. Yeah. 
said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Tell the breath. God the master says, come from the four winds. Come from the east, the south, the north, and the west. Come and breathe on these bodies. Breathe life. So I prophesy just as he commanded. And the breath entered them. And they came alive. They stood up on their feet. A huge army of men. God said, okay, son of man. You're doing all right. You're doing what I told you to do. Now, let me tell you something. These bones, uh, these bones that you're looking at right now that used to be dry, that used to be laying on the ground, this is the house of Israel. And listen to what they are saying. Our bones have dried up. Our hope is gone. There's nothing left in us. Therefore, uh, man, they, they, you know they're slow. They don't get it always on the first time. So tell them that, 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 that God the Master said, I'll dig up your grave. And bring you out alive, O oh my people, and then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. And when I dig up the graves and bring you out as my people, you will realize that I am God. I will bring my might into you, and you will live. Yeah. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land, and then once again, you will finally realize that I am God. I said it, and I will do it. Our king is coming. Our king has come. It might seem uncertain right now, but now is not the time to lose hope or to allow your faith and joy to dry up. Now is the time to remember what, uh, what Minister Cheatham told us last week. We have the victory. One day at a time, every day is a new victory. For us right now, we, we might be tired and perhaps weary of not knowing. Uh, for us right now, we might be tired of growing numbers of sick and dead and falling markets. For us right now, we might have lost our joy worrying about what might happen. But as you live and as you breathe, you know the track record of your God. Yes, you know that God has always been there for you. God has shown up time and time again. And just like the bones Ezekiel preached to, God is still speaking to you and me right now today. No, you are not in church waving palms. And no, you're not preparing to take communion. But God is still saying, I am not. I don't need your rituals, but I need you to believe who I am. I need you to know that I am able to restore everything you thought you lost. I In darkness, I will set your joy bells ringing once again. I am still God, God is saying to us. I'm still your redeemer. I'm still your savior. I'm still your king. And now, I'm not coming, I have already come. I am the God who picked you up when you had fallen. I am the God that wiped the tears from your eyes when your heart was broken. I am the God that opened a door that had once been closed give you another chance. I am still the God who says if I did it once, I can do it again. I'm still right in just when you need me the most to deliver you from your greatest challenge, sin. The issue for us in these times is to be grateful. God is faithful to God's promises and therefore even now, right now, God is here with us. Trust God in this moment and be grateful. As bad as it might be for you right now, like the song said, there's someone else who would love to be in your shoes. So wave your air palms with joy. Shout Hosanna in your house this morning. Not because the kingdom is coming, but because the king has already come. And, and while this is true, that we are in this together, like all the TV stations said, everybody say we in this together. But the good news is not just that we're in it together, but God is with us and God will restore us. And the people of God said, Amen. If you are not sure.
relationship. I'm about your relationship with God. Is he, I wonder, is he really coming? Now is the time for you to declare for yourself that God is coming. Now is the time to ask the Lord to come into your life and take charge and be Lord of all. And so, if that's you this morning, or maybe your spirit's just a little weak, maybe you just got a little weary, and you need to remember that God is able to move mountains when God wants to move a mountain to get to you, then I want you to do something with me. I want you to pray with me right now. Once again, that's, that's a simple prayer. Lord, dear God, I don't want to be my own master. But I want you to take charge of my life. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me for going my own way. So right now, God, I want to surrender my life to you. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. But most of all, I receive you, God, as my Lord and my master. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you.